Welcome back to another 40k battle report today guys from Battleforged Brothers and today we're playing across this Eldar Maiden world and today it is a game of big guns never tire against two ancient foes we have Craftworld Iandon against my Necron force today so we'll be battling across in a frontline assault deployment manner so as you can see this side here I've elected to be mine represented by the grey steely looking dice and across that side represented by the blue are going to be Craftworld Iandon. Uh, just as a note as well, this is a game before the, the new Codex drops, uh, so we are just playing by the index rules for the time being, but we'll be looking forward to using the new rules when they drop. So, big guns never tell you we're playing today, so objectives, um, we have objective one, just near the rune over here, objective two, just near the forest area and jungles, objective three, just coming around next to this obelisk just over there we have number four just at the foot of the obelisk and we have over this side on the left number five just on the edge there and number six just down here and uh, just for cover naturally the rocks will be giving us cover um, against some of the smaller units uh, big things such as uh, monoliths and wraith knights and tanks uh, will not gain cover if they can be seen obviously uh, we are just playing that the big mounds forest areas you will gain cover from so such as the, the this one here and the big one over there and these two across here these small ones here of course not going to gain any cover from that um so um obviously with it being big guns never tire uh, you get point for three points per objective if we're holding towards the end of the game and of course uh slay the warlord first blood and line breaker and points for killing heavy support units today as well so um, with that all being said let's go and have a look at the army lists so me and graham are going to take turns in deploying and we will show you the list in a moment so we'll be back in a in a moment right okay so this is craftworld iandon and what a very nice looking force it is today um as we said before the uh, craftworld uh, the codex Craft Worlds drop. Uh, it's very nice to see a very thematic um, force on the board today, looking very meaty. So, um, Graham is running three detachments uh, Super Heavy Auxiliary, uh, Vanguard, and Outrider. So, just moving across, uh, we have one, two, three squads of bikes here. Uh, these ones are all armed with um, shuriken cannons, aren't they? Cannons and, cannons and scatter lasers. Yeah. I think that's these guys here that has the scatter lasers, the four. Cannons, cannons, and yep, scatter lasers. Scatter lasers. Oh, scatter are them guys there. The rest are cannons. 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 Uh, we have Prince Ariel here. Is he your warlord? He's my warlord. He's a warlord. Very fitting. Uh, we have a squad of Wraith Guard with D sides at the back there. And we have the big Wraith Knight here, um, obviously leading the leading the way. Uh, we have Wraith Blades following behind. We have a uh, three individual units here of Night Spinners. Uh, they all have crystal target matrix and the underslung shuriken cannon as well. Uh, just for, to mention for Warlord Trace, um, Prince Ariel has chose Tenacious Survivor. Um, we have another squad of Wraith Guard here with the D cannons. And we also have three uh, three squad three uh, three squads of three uh, jet bikes with uh, shuriken cannons, these guys. Shuriken cannons and scatter lasers. Oh right, just okay, so two two squadrons with cannons, one with scatter, yeah. and Farseer who has uh, Doom and Fortune. So looking very nice and uh, very meaty. Uh, looking very impressive with the knight uh, wanting to march forward. Um, no reserves for Craft World I in today. Everything's all on the board, and that gives Graham a total of six command points. So let's go and have a look at the Necrons, which will be resurfacing to take them on. Right, okay, so this is my 2,502 points worth of Necrons, uh, which will be taken on the Iandon today. Uh, just to quickly mention as well, I got the command points wrong for the Craft World. Uh, they, are, they get five command points. Uh, we get six because we're running a battalion and we are battleforged. So moving across, uh, we have a squad of warriors here. We have another squad of warriors inside the Ghost Ark, which is just behind the uh, the Eldar pillar. Um, another squad of warriors there, and just around the corner this way, we have our warlord, um, the Overlord, who has resurrection orb, and of course he's on Catacomb command barge with a Gauze cannon underneath. 
Uh, we have a five-man squad of Lich Guard uh, with the Swords and Shields. Uh, we have a five-man squad there of Immortals with Gauze, a uh, Cryptek beside them as well. And we have two Night Scythes uh, with the Tesla weapons. We have also a squad of nine Scarabs just anchoring the right-hand side along here, ready to move out. And just tucking along, just behind the trees are the Wraiths. Um, they are just equipped as you see them. Uh, just in reserve as well, we also have, uh, not only do we have a squad of 10 warriors in the Ghost Ark, we also have a monolith, and we have also acquired the obelisk from Graham's Necrons. So we'll be bringing that on as well. So at the moment, it currently is Iandan going first, because they did finish deploying before me. Uh, we are the underdog, however, because Iandan is 2,532 points. So... We'll hope to see if we can seize this time on a five up. Okay, on a roll of a three, we don't. I'm not going to command point that. Uh, we're going to let the Eldar have their first turn. So we'll come back after movement for at Craft World Iander on turn one. Right, okay, so just back after Crawford Alliandon's movement phase and uh, Prince Uriel, um, the aggressive young prince he is, he's sent all of his force uh, to march forward. So leading the way is the ancient Wraithborn construct that is the Wraith Knight, um, just marching ahead. Um, obviously forgot to mention, but as you can see, uh, what he's equipped with is what he's equipped with. Uh, so he's leading the, leading the way, about to get ready to smash into the Necron lines. Just across this side, the Farseer leading his... Outrider detachment round here and backed up by the Night Spinner and just behind the Night Spinner is the squad of Wraith Guard as well um, Just across this side as well Wraith Blades moving through Backed up by their tank as well Another Night Spinner with the Warlord himself um, very appropriately near the, the tower um, With another squad of Wraith Guard behind them and of course the Wind Riders flanking round this side here uh, looks very impressive, to, uh, very nice to see, um, although obviously yes there is the bikes there, but it's good that they're not troops anymore because um, with me being a very old school uh, craft world player, uh, it's very nice to see lots of Wraith Guard in Iandan forces, um, you know, no, not, a sight, not a single Guardian on, on the board yet, but that's the movement all completed, uh, there's, like I said there's no reserves to come on the board or anything like that, so we'll go into a very quick psychic phase, Graham does have a farce here on the board, so we'll do Psychic and we'll do the shooting phase as well. So we'll be back after shooting has been completed for Crawford Leandum on their turn one.
Right, okay, so just back after Psychic and Shooting. Uh, Graham did make a bit of an error on his Psychic Powers. Uh, it wasn't Doom and Fortune, it was Doom and Guide. Uh, try to cast uh, Doom on uh, these warriors down here and failed, and try to guide the Wraith Knight and failed as well. Uh, just shooting. A lot of firepower coming in from the scatter bikes, uh, these two scatter uh, bike squadrons, the Shuriken and also the Night Spinner. Uh, took a few of the warriors down here. Uh, firepower coming over from the Wraith Knight um, just killed uh, five of these guys down here and a lot of firepower so these two uh, Night Spinners down at the Lich Guard took out two of the Lich Guard uh, we will still get reanimation of course but they're down and out for the time being and these guys over here currently not in range so uh, Graham doesn't have any assaults to set off or anything like that so that is the end of turn one for Crafter Alde Andam. Um, and we will go to turn one for the Necrons. So let's see how many of these we can get back. And let's take the fight to the Eldari. Right, so just back after the Necrons movement for turn one. And they are on the move indeed. So uh, just very quickly, uh, did morale for these two squads that lost numbers from the Wraith Knight and the Combined Fire from the uh, Craft Welders on their turn. Uh, and we passed. Uh, we've gained our num uh, two of our number back over here, and this unit here gained none of them back, but at the end of the turn for the repair barge gained another two. Um, so they're fine over there. And just over this side, reanimated one of the Lich Guard back as well. Uh, we have a command ability we've used from the command barge uh, within 12, and we've elected this unit, which is just disembarked from the Ghost Arc, which the Ghost Arc has just come zipped along. They've disembarked uh, within an inch away from these. They're not too sure who to shoot at yet, um, but their plus one uh, to hit will be very handy there. Uh, Lich Guard are just moving up, as well as the Immortals, just backed up with the Cryptek over here. The Scarabs just come scuttling through along there. Look as though they're going to try and go for one of these tanks or potentially might bog down the, uh, the Wraith Blades. Um, just across this side... Uh, these have advanced two in, uh, an extra two inches, so uh, they just moved across, just hiding behind there. It's a bit of a nasty surprise for these guys. And the night sights, as you can see, one's just come along just to lend some Tesla fire support. And the other one has just pivoted and just gone flying straight over there, get some shots at the back lines. Um, we haven't forgotten about the obelisk or the monolith, and um, we've elected not to bring them in at this particular moment. Um, we'll wait and see what's going to happen first. So apart from that, uh, that's movement all done and dusted. So we're going to go into the shooting phase for Necrons on their turn one. Right, so we're just back after the turn one shooting for Necrons. So just across this side, uh, rapid fire damage into the Farseer with it being the closest target, reduced from down to four wounds. Um, we also whittled down uh, this squad here down to one man, so he'll have to take uh, morale, uh, the morale phase. Uh, these guys and the... The Ghost Arc fired into the Wraith Knight and dropped him by two wounds. He's still absolutely fine. Um, the, uh, the Immortals, they fired up into the... What's it called again? The Night Scythe uh, did no damage there. Across this side, this Night Scythe didn't do particularly well. Um, managed to drop down one of the bikes across there. Uh, across this side, however, this one managed to get uh, quite a lot of shots... Took out one of the Wraith Guard down there with them having three wounds apiece. Uh, I thought that was quite decent work there. So apart from that, um, we also have a couple of charges to set off as well. So we're going to charge the Scarabs into the Night Scythe. Uh, we're going to attempt to get the Lich Guard into the Wraith Knight. A bit of a risky move, uh, but we're also going to charge the Warriors into the, uh, the Wraith Knight as well. So, um, I'll measure up distances. Obviously, Graham will have to decide um, is Overwatch. Um, obviously, by the looks of it, you can multi-Overwatch. Uh, just to mention as well, these weapons on the top, Graham hasn't paid for them, so he is literally just armed with the Sun Cannon. So, across here, reckon we need about a 7-inch charge to get everybody in. So, we will roll. On a 5, should still be able to actually... I'm going to command point this one. Okay, on a, on a six. So uh, we are down by one command point now. Uh, Graham has also used one as well in a, in a psychic phase. Uh, so they will be in. So Graham will have to do his all watch against them. 
Um, Lich Guard against Wraith Knight. I reckon these guys need about a five inch charge just because of them going around and through. So we'll just roll it down here. Okay, that is a, can't even see because of the light. Sorry guys. Uh, that's a seven inch charge they'll be in. And these guys will only need about a two inch charge. So, and again, down here. Four and three make seven. So they'll be in as well. So of course, we will do Overwatch as well. Uh, we'll get the combats resolved as well. But we'll come back after combat and morale has been done on Necrons for their turn one. Right, so just back after the end of Necrons on their turn uh, one. Uh, for combats, uh, not a great deal. Uh, we managed to dish out a couple of hits but no wounds on the uh, Wraith Knight here. Uh, we actually done three wounds but Graham passed all of his saves. Um, and in return, um, Graham used all of his feet attacks and smashed one of the Immortals. Uh, one of the Lich Guards, sorry. Over this side, uh, the Scarabs are just nibbling away at the whole armour here and reduced it down to nine wounds there. Um, apart from that, nothing else to cover. Um, at currently, First Blood is still on the cards. Yeah. And nobody's getting Warlord or anything like that at the moment at all. So, as the Eldar, obviously using their big Wraith Construct to hold up the Necrons here, uh, their Ghost Warriors will march alongside with Prince Ariel and his tanks moving across. Let's see if they can dish any more hurt out to their ancient foes. So we'll be back after movement for them on turn two. Right, so just back after the Eldar on their turn two movement. Um, right, so there's quite a lot of stuff that's moved. So, uh, with the Unstoppable Revenant rule, uh, obviously the Wraith Knight has just jumped out of combat. Look, as though he's wanting to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with one of these two guys. Uh, Warlord is here. Second in command is there. So it looks as though the Warlord could potentially be in trouble. But... The Wraith Lord is, uh, the Wraith Knight, sorry, is now in our lines. Um, not liking that. Over this side, uh, the Wraith Blade, uh, Wraith Blade unit is slowly pouring through the ruin there. Uh, backed up by this, um, the, the, what's it called again, the uh, Night Spinner. Uh, this has just come across that way. Um, the one that was in combat has just gone over there. Uh, bikes just zipping across there. Uh, backed up by... The Wraith Guard with the D sights looking to probably flame down to these guys here. Um, and across this side, jet bikes, one that's wounded as well, all performing like a, a flank, like an envelope. And as you can see, panning across the board, um, the Eldar look as though they are trying to secure and go around the Necrons. So around this side, these guys have moved as well. Uh, the Farseer just packing them up with psychic support. And it looks as though uh, the Wraith Guard are going to be trying to take down some of the flies as well. So that's all the movement all done and dusted. So we'll do a quick psychic phase and shooting for Eldar, Croftwell, Leandon on their turn two. Right, so we're just back after the Psychic and Shooting Phase for the Eldar on their turn too. So Psychic, uh, cast Guide on these bikes here, um, and in the sub and that was it. Uh, oh, sorry, and Smite as well. Smite killed one of our warriors down here. The Shooting Phase, as you can see, First Blood was scored by Combined Firepower from this unit, obviously the Guided unit. Uh, these, this unit here and the Lone uh, one here wiped out these warriors down here. Uh, a lot of firepower coming in at the Night Scythe over there and we dropped it down a couple of wounds there. And over this side, a couple of the Scarabs brought down by the D Scythes as well as uh, a couple of 
no, actually, that was just the D side, sorry. Uh, taking a couple of pot shots at the Lich Guard from this Night Spinner here, uh, managed to kill one of them. And over this side, these guys has fired all of their, uh, the scatter bikes and the shuriken cannon bikes, and managed to drop one of the wraith and left another one down to one, uh, two runes. Um, over this side, however, we did forget that Overlord has a 4 plus in run. So we've been taking our normal saves for that and we are getting punished for it because he's on one wound. And that's all of the shooting done and Grim does have a charge or two to set off. So how many charges have you got to set off? Um, I'm going to set off just the one charge. Just the one charge. That'll be the Wraith Knight into the Overlord. Uh, yeah. The Overlord, yeah. Okay, so we will get Overwatch, um, but we'll just see if he gets in first of all. Uh, yep, that'll definitely be in, so uh, we'll resolve Overwatch and combats as well. So apart from that, we'll come back at the end of the phase. Right, so we are just back after the combats and the Eldar have struck a blow to the Necrons. They have killed the Overlord. So it did explode as well. So addition out a mortal wound to the Wraith Knight and a mortal wound to the Crypt Deck as well. So he is gone. Um, bit unfortunate there, but uh, you live and learn. I should have took, been taking me phase shifter saves. Um, and, of course, he's just consolidating this way. So at the moment, that puts the Eldar on two points to the Necron's zero. Um, so I need to bring it back for the Necron players out there. So we'll be back after the movement phase has been completed for Necrons on their turn two. Right, so in his dying mechanical breath, the... Overlord has issued his commands for a second in command to deal, lead the force. So what's happened is Scarabs have just moved back. And as over there coming across here either to block these off or they might end up even going for the Wraith Knight themselves. In the meantime, the Immortals have just come scooting around this rock to fight to do some fire support and block their advance off, supported by the second in command. Um, the, the Wraith have just swept around looking to get in combat over there. Um, this Night Scythe has just come zipping across, looking to get some firepower into the Wraith or potentially um, one of these over here. Uh, Wraith Guard, uh, the, the Lich Guard, sorry, got two of their number back from reanimation protocols and look as though they're going to try and get in combat there. Uh, these Warriors have just come across looking to get the shit shots into the rear armor of that. Not that armor value matters, but sounds cool. And this Warrior Squad has just come to block the advance of the Wraith Knight. Meantime, Ghost Ark has just come zipping along as well, either to fight to fire into that, fire spot that way, or this way, depending on which. And the second Night Scythe has come scooting along, get as much firepower into these as possible. You can also target the uh, Farseer as well, with them being the closest target. Um, we got two of our number back to this squad as well from reanimation protocols. And just at the end, uh, we have brought in the big guns. So the Monolith has just dropped back in our lines, just to support against the Wraith Knight rampaging across and also some of the bikes that are in our bat lines and also we brought in the obelisk the obelisk has just dropped down nine and a half inches away from Iriel and of course a lot of, of support and fire to dish out across here so as the gauze arrays and all the electrical weapons of Tesla heat up ready to dish out some fire support uh, we will march on into Necrons for their shooting turn two Right, so just back after the shooting phase for Necrons on their turn two. So, a lot of shooting going on. Uh, we managed to drop the Wraith Knight down by five wounds. Uh, that was firepower from the Monolith uh, with its particle whip. A um, couple of sh shots into this Knight Scythe, dropping it down to nine over here. Poor, uh, poor rules uh, rolling, to be fair, down on this side. Not a great deal to go through in that way. Uh, we shot into uh, from this uh, squad. And we dropped one of the Wraith Guard down to one wound. Uh, all of the Flux Arcs from this uh, fired down to one of the squads down here and killed it. And then we decided with the Obelisk to fire one of the Tesla Spheres down at this squad. Reduced it down, uh, the four-man squad that was there reduced it down by two. And then the rest of them firing into to Iriel. And he's half dead, he's on three wounds at the moment. Uh, firepower from this uh, Night South with the Tesla weapons. Uh, reducing this night scythe down to seven wounds so n just whittling things down for the time being and uh, not major casualties on the board and uh, we do have three charges to set off so first of all 
Uh, we're going to do the Scarabs. are going to attempt to charge the Wraith Knight. And then we're going to charge the Lich Guard into this uh, Knight Spinner here. And then finally, uh, the Wraiths are going to charge this Jetpack Squad down here. So of course we will do Overwatch as well. But for these, we need about a 6 inch charge to get in. We have used one command point as well on our shooting phase. Uh, just to re-roll one of the hits for the uh, Particle Whip. Okay, so that is a 3. I am going to command point that. Okay, or uh, 5. That should be enough to get the majority of them in there. So, of course, Graham will still get his Overwatch against them. And for the Lich Guard, right, they need a 2-inch charge for them to get in. Okay, on a 2, uh, on an 8, uh, they'll be in over there. And finally, uh, the Wraith, they'll need about a 2-inch charge across here as well. So, we'll quickly roll that. Okay, on a 10, they'll definitely be in. So, we'll get to Overwatch and Combat Resolves, and then we'll come back at the top of Eldar Turn 3. Right, okay, so we're just back after combat for Necrons on their turn two. Um, so down here, uh, we didn't do any damage to the Wraith Knights, and the Wraith Knights whittling the Scarabs down quite a bit. Um, over this side, we did dish out uh, a couple of whole points down, well, wounds, onto this unit here. And as you can expect, the Wraiths um, made mincemeat out of this squad down here. So apart from that, uh, as they just consolidated that way, and... Nothing else left to run through, so we'll be back after the Eldar on their movement for their turn three. Right, so we're just back after the Eldar uh, movement for their turn three. So, um, a lot of movement from the Night Spinners. So, that one there is just backed off the one that's on six wounds. Uh, the other one uh, that's on, I believe, hit this guy's uh, still on nine wounds, he's just retreating back. And uh, this one here. And the one that we were in combat, he's just fell back out of combat. That's uh, what that map is there for. Wraith Guard, just coming down this way. Looking to get some shots more than likely against the Ghost Arc. Or potentially this Warrior Squad here. Um, and the Wraith Blades, um, looking very cool on the board. This uh, looks as though these are going to go toe to toe with each other in combat. Um, Wraith Guard, with the D-Sides, have just come marching down. Uh, just to maybe spray their Warp Flame from the D-Sides down at these. Uh, just around the corner here is the Warlord, uh, just hiding behind the uh, the Eldar structure there. Um, Wraith Knight has fell out of combat, uh, looks as though he's going, coming down here to chase after the Monolith, or potentially you've got the Immortals here as well. And just around this side, uh, the Farseer and the three separate squadrons, so this guy's squadron on his own, and then they've got three and then two there, just all move their normal distance. Look like probably got some shots against this warrior squad here. So apart from that, um, not anything else to run through. Um, we will just move on to a quick psychic phase and shooting phase for Eldar on their turn three. Right, so just back after the um, Eldar's turn three psychic and shooting. So as you can see, the warriors are gone. That was from psychic phase as well as shooting. So psychic, uh, Farseer cast guide on this uh, bike squadron in front. Also try to cast Smite. Graham did use one of his command points, so he's down to two. Uh, just to try and re-roll and still failed. So these lot, all of these, fired in. There was two warriors remaining. And it came down to the Wraith Knight, who fired his Sun Cannon a bit overkill. And took them two out. So mission accomplished by the Eldar down this side. Over this side, uh, obviously that one couldn't fire with a fallen back. But these two fired into the Night Scythe and reduced it down considerably. Um, it is cur currently down... Uh, to eight wounds. Not enough to inflict any uh, critical damage or anything like that yet. Uh, the Wraith Guard down here, unlucky with their shooting, only got one hit um, from these guys um, and dealt out a couple of wounds down to the Ghost Arc, but still absolutely fine over this side. A um, couple of scatterbite sh uh, shots from uh, these ones over here up, up at the Night Scythe did no damage. And apart from that, uh, as you can see, there's currently two Immortals left and that came from firepower from the deed sites. So apart from that um, just that is all the shooting done a couple of assaults to set off as well And um, I believe I think there's about two or three uh, charges to set off so um, what charges are we setting off first and doing the warriors uh, The wraith guard sorry in your lich guard. Okay, so the wraith blade unit here um, There's no overwatch for these guys. So pretty much just a straight roll Okay on a six that should uh, be enough to get them all in. Yeah, Okay, and 
the Wraith Knight. Big Daddy Wraith Knight into the Monolith? Into the Monolith. Okay, uh, we will get Orb Watch, but we'll just won't see if you're in. I think you're going to need about a three inch charge to get him in. Yeah. Yep, he's fine. And that's it? That's it. Okay, so we'll get uh, Orb Watch resolved as well as the combats. Um, and we'll be back at the end of Eldar turn three. Right, okay, so we are just back after uh, the end of Eldar turn two on their combat phase. And as you can see, Monolith's still alive and kicking. Uh, very poor from the Wraith Knight. Um, Grim got one hit wound. Um, we took and rolled a d6 and got a 1 so we got suffered 1 wound on that uh, unfortunate there over this side um, the combat phase uh, not too bad from the Wraith, uh, the Wraith Blades took out one of the Lich Guard um, we dealt no damage back we uh, absolutely failed on our uh, to wound rolls uh, apart from that that's everything all done and dusted for combat phase uh, we've done morale as well uh, the Immortals have passed and the Lich Guard have passed as well Apart from that, we will come back after movement for Necrons on their turn three. Right, okay, so we're just back after the Necrons movement on their turn three. Uh, just, to, uh, just to cap off, um, we did do morale and we passed. I uh, don't know if I mentioned that last time, but we were fine. Um, reanimation, we gained one of our number back here, and we didn't over with the Lich Guard, so they're still in combat over there. Um, Living Metal, obviously everything that lost a wound, so these two Night Scythes, uh, the Ghost Arc and the Monolith uh, all back up by one wound, the Monolith being back at full health. So, as you can see, we've pulled this Night Scythe down here just to get some fire support down here. Uh, the other ones just come scooting across this side, looking to get some shots at these bikes as well. Uh, these warriors just down near the objective down that side, near the trees, are staying exactly where they are. Uh, the Ghost Arc's just pulled up this way just to secure uh, objective three near the tree line, just going to get bit of cover support that way and uh, just moving across uh, the scarabs have just pulled across forming a bit of a well a mechanical shield I suppose against firepower there and these are staying exactly where they are monoliths pulled out of combat uh, with it having the float and fortress rule still be able to use its weapons to full capacity uh, the wraith have stayed exactly where they are and the obelisk has just pulled around its eight inches just with the line of sight down at Prince Iriel um, so uh, that being said, we will come back after shooting. Uh, no psychics, of course, for the next ones. So we'll be back after the shooting phase on turn three. Right, okay, so we are just back after the shooting phase for Necrons on their turn three. Um, quite impressive, actually. Um, as you can see, uh, these two night sides working in tandem. This guy reduced this unit down to one, so you'll have to do morale. Um, and this guy shot down and took out the scatter bikes down there, so diminishing a lot of firepower down here. Uh, across this side, rapid firing coming from the Ghost Arc as well as these Warriors has whittled this unit down to squad of three and one one, one wound. Um, the, knight si uh, the Knight Spinners are left untouched uh, at this particular moment. Uh, across this side, we've totally ignored the Wraith Knight. We were going to fire into it, but then we decided not to. We fired everything from the Monolith into uh, the Wraith Guard and reduced them down to a squad of two. Um, and a little bit of fire support coming in, so we fired one of the Tesla Spheres. Uh, down here as well, uh, didn't do any damage, and the other three we have Warlord killed Prince Iriel with three wounds remaining. Uh, we dished out 25 wounds with them sixes for Tesla, and Graham just obviously the, the, the weight of wounds just wasn't enough. So, we do have uh, obviously an ongoing combat down here. I've also got two charges to set off as well. So, we're gonna charge the Scarabs into it's a bit risky. I know they've got flamers and the automatic hit, but. Uh, we're going to charge them into the Wraith Guard uh, the, down there. So I reckon they need about a 3 inch. Okay, so on a 4. four. Yep, no it's a 5, sorry it's a 3. Just five. underneath that. Yeah, so on a 5, they should be in. Yeah. Yep, that's cool. Grim of course will get Overwatch that side. And over here, uh, we're going to charge uh, this Warrior Squad into them Wraith Guard down there. So I reckon it'll be the same. Need about a 4 inch yeah. charge. Okay, so that on a six, that'll be in. So obviously we will have all watch to resolve as well, but we'll come back after the end of Necrons on their turn three. Right, so we are just back after the assault phase and morale for Necrons on their turn three. Um, so over this side, we did manage to dish out a wound onto the Wraith Guard, and the Wraith Guard smashed apart one of the bases in return. We have passed morale there. Um, over this side. Um, we did use two command points to interfere with combat. We took out one of the Wraith Blades, but the Wraith Blades uh, dealt out 
Um, four wounds in total. We failed our in runs there. Um, so a bit devastating over there. We did pass morale, of course, but we do, do still have the chance of reanimating. Uh, over this side, uh, we dished out a few wounds onto this guy here. We did two wounds and we lost one of our uh, warriors. So apart from that, um, that's everything all done and dusted. Uh, morale all passed where it needs to be. So we'll come back at the top of Eldar for their turn four. Right, okay, so just back after the movement phase for Iandon on their turn four. So these two individual uh, squads, so obviously he's part of one squad, he's part of another remaining. I've just zipped along across here. Look as though they're going to get some shots either against the Cryptech or the Immortals. Uh, Wraith Knight's staying exactly where he is. Uh, just across this side, the Farsi has just zipped across from underneath uh, the shadows of the Night Scythe. Just coming across here. And all three of the night spinners are just converging across this side probably looking to get some shots up maybe at the flyers uh, obviously ongoing combat over there there and down here as well and obviously these jet bikes here is just staying exactly where they are um, so that is all the movement all done and um, so we'll just do a very quick psychic phase and shooting for Iandon on their turn four Right, okay, so just back after the uh, turn four, psychic and shooting for Iandon. So, sight phase, uh, cast guide onto this night spinner and also try to cast doom uh, onto this night scythe and failed for doom. Uh, got guide off, but unfortunately, Graham did forget about guide for this one. So, all three of the night spinners shot into the night scythe and reduced it down to five runes, so that's knocked it down a bracket. Um, other firepower, obviously, uh, this bike here which has the shirt and cannon uh, reduced the cryptech down to one wound and the one with the scatter fired into the immortals and did no damage um the wraith knight shot into the monolith and did no damage um, apart from that uh, that was all of the shooting done so not too bad from the neckland's perspective uh graham does have four charges to set off so we've got the farseer uh, um going to join in over here we've also got uh, these both of these two are going to charge into the Cryptech and the Wraith Knight into the Monolith. So we're going to do the fast here over here first. Mm -hmm. Okay, so Retton here needs about a four inch charge. Yep, three. Yeah. Okay, on a nine, yeah, he'll be in. Obviously, no Overwatch, so he'll be able to move in, no problem at all. Um, so this bike into the Cryptech, we will get Overwatch. Yep, that's yep, it. he'll be in. And the other one, yeah, that on a roll it, of a six, yeah. yeah, he'll be in. And the uh, the yeah, Wraith Knight into the modern Athena needs about a four inch charge. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, okay. So all the, all them in. Uh, we'll resolve Overwatch against the units that can Overwatch, and then we'll do combat, and we'll be back at the end of the combat and morale phase. Right. Okay. So we're just back after combat phase for the Eldar. So over this uh, side, um, just causing a wound, and apart from that, nothing. Uh, Overwatch. We managed to kill one of the bikes. Um, over this side, no uh, we, uh, sorry, the Wraith Knight dished out a few runes and knocked the Monolith down to 14. Uh, across this side, uh, the Wraith Guard and the Farsi dished out quite a lot of runes there. Took out two, uh, sorry, three of the warriors there. Uh, Pass morale. Um, and of course, the Lich Guard are no more. Wraith Blades just scoot around this on their consolidation move. So that is the end of the phase for the Eldar on their turn four. Uh, we'll come back after movement for the Necrons on their turn four. Right, so okay, so we're just back after movement for Necrons on their turn four. Um, right, so, uh, Living Metal first of all, regained a wound back and he's come uh, turned and gone straight forward that way. Uh, the other one regained a wound back, he's just gone straight 20 on top of there. We'll just drop, pulled back with the, uh, the Ghost Arc uh, regained a wound back. We pulled out a combat with these warriors as well. Um, across this side, uh, the Cryptex still in combat of Living Metal getting a wound back. Uh, Living Metal getting a wound back with the uh, the Monolith as well. He's just pulled out a combat. Um, we've also pulled out a combat with the Scarab and just come across in between the woodland here. And we also regained reanimation, gained a, a mortal back there. We're going to get as much firepower into these two as possible. Um, the obelisk, I just shifted him ever so slightly f back uh, just to get a, a little bit of firepower in the back lines there. Uh, over this side, uh, Wraith's staying exactly where they are for the time being. Um, apart from that, uh, well, we also regained one of our warriors back here as well. 
And apart from that, we will come back after shooting for Necrons on their turn four. Right, so we are just back after the shooting phase for Necrons on their turn four. And um, not too much happening. Um, whittling the units down, we finally managed to take out this unit here. Uh, that was combined firepower coming from uh, the the Necrons Immortals, uh, rapid firing, stripping them down. It did come down to the Monolith there. We fired two of the Flux Arcs into the last remaining Wraith Guard, killed them. Everything else fired into the Night Spinner, uh, reduced them down to four wounds. And then we fired everything from the Obelisk down at the Night Spinner and blew it up. Uh, isn't actually exploded. We don't count it for, for line blocking or anything like that. We just think it looks cool. Um, don't like the idea of just pulling things off. I think if it's blue, if it's being shot to bits, it should at least still be wrecked. Um, firepower coming in from these guys as well. Uh, Whitling this squad down to two wraith guard, one on one wound, one at full health. Um, and we also rapid fired uh, this uh, ghost arc into the Farsian, reduced them down to four wounds. Um, obviously, these guys fell back, so they can't do anything. Um, apart from that. Nothing else to cover, we just have an ongoing combat uh, just between the Cryptech and the Lone Bike there. So we'll get that resolved and then we'll move on to turn 5 for Eandon, um, coming up to the potential final turns for both of us. So we'll be back after combat and morale has been sorted out. Right, so just back after combat and morale. Uh, morale is absolutely fine across the board. Um, very, very quickly, uh, we dished out no damage to the bike and the bike dished out one wound which did fail our save so uh, a bit unfortunate there um apart from that uh, we're just going into movement for eldar on their turn five so we'll be back after movement has been completed all right okay so the uh, the fury of Iandon is uh, certainly uh, being felt across the board here so just on movement as you can see uh, this poor little squad down here has a lot of guns pointing at us uh, so the wraith guards just shifted down backed up by their farseer and two of the night spinners glaring down at them, so I don't expect them to uh, be around for very much longer. Um, and of course, once they're taken care of, Graham will probably be able to sweep over to this objective here. Uh, the wraith blades just uh, moving through near the ruins of the uh, of the Eldari statue there. Um, obviously, in combat over here, wraith knight is just moved just slightly round behind the back of the monolith. Uh, it's still an inch away, and the wind riders have just come along they've advanced their full 22 so they're just sat on that objective over there uh, so very quick psychic phase to come up and of course shooting uh, so we'll come back after shooting's been resolved right okay so we're just back after the uh, psychic and shooting phase for eldar on their turn uh, their turn five so just coming around this side uh, obviously cast a guide on the wraith card and doomed the uh, failed to doom on the, the warriors there and managed to take out uh, three of their number a lot of firepower in the shooting phase coming from these uh, stripped down uh, the ghost arc down to five wounds so that's on middle damage uh, so moderate damage on that uh, across this side uh, sun cannon firing into uh, the wraith uh, dealt out three wounds and passed all of them with our invuns uh, apart from that nothing else to cover on the shooting side of it uh, oh, the, the Farsi also uh, to take some pot shots into the Warriors and fail to do any damage there. Uh, so Graham does uh, just have uh, three charges to set off and one continuing combat down here. So the Farsi and the uh, Wraith Guard are charging in there. So are you doing the Farsi first? Farsi first. Yeah, so Farsi. Yep, same. Okay, he'll be in. We will get Overwatch and the Wraith Guard. Yep. That's just past the smoke, yep. Uh, they are in as well. And the Wraith Knight is going to be charging into the Monolith. One. Double one. Uh, that should still be enough to yeah. get him in. Um, Okie okay, doke. So we'll double check that because previously I think a double one used to always fail. But I think that's an automatically in anyway because you only have to be within an inch. So I think I'm going to allow that anyway. Uh, I'm pretty confident that that is the case. So we'll get Overwatch and combat's resolved. And we'll come back after combat has been resolved. And any morale that needs to be done as well. So we'll be back in a moment. Right, so we're just back after combat phase for the Craftworld Iandon on their turn five. So down here, um, the Farsi are doing quite well actually. Um, taking two of the Necrons out. Uh, sorry, one of them out and a little bit of help from the Wraith Guard took out the other. Uh, they have passed morale. Um, we dished out one wound back but Graham passed his save from the Warriors there. Uh, just moving down, both just slapping each other. Uh, around here at the Cryptech 
furiously trying to hit the uh, the wind rider as he's zipping around over his head. Um, and over this side, uh, the Wraith Knight um, doing quite well, uh, stripping eight wounds off the monolith. So that's bringing it down to eight. He was on sixteen, um, and surprisingly, uh, the monolith actually dealt the wound back. So it hit it with its gun. Um, so another wound taken off the Wraith Knight. So apart from that, uh, that's all combat and morale all done. So that is the Eldar turn five. We'll go into the Necrons turn five and the potential final turn of the game. So we need to try and see if we can be a little bit sneaky and see what we can do. So we'll be back in a moment. Right, okay, so we're just back after moving for the Necrons on their turn five. Um, both of the flies have managed to angle themselves and getting around this way. So making a swoop and advance around here. Uh, the Immortals have just advanced in a bit of a daisy chain. Uh, Scarabs are t staying exactly where they are. Monolith is just retreat, uh, just come up slightly here, more than an inch, inch away. Uh, these two have just been playing uh, Can You Catch Me If You Can, I suppose. Um, these guys just staying exactly where they are as well. Uh, the Obelisk just shifted across two inches. Across this side, not a great deal. Obviously, we couldn't reanimate because we're in combat over there. Um, it's staying exactly where it is there for the ghost arc. Uh, obviously we've done uh, reanimation for the immortals and got one of them back as and everything else with living metal is getting up, gained a wound back. So um, we are going to go into the shooting phase and we're going to start off uh, just with the gravity pulse over there for the obelisk uh, just before I forget. So we'll do gravity pulse and then we'll get all the rest of the shooting done. Um, so we'll be back after that has been resolved. Right, so we are just back after the shooting phase for Necrons on their turn five. Uh, we did do gravity pulse and didn't do anything over there, uh, but the Tesla spheres wiped out that unit, so that's fine. That's that threat dealt with. Uh, over this side, we haven't shot anything at the Wraith Knight, just going to ignore him. Shot uh, the Monolith, uh, the Immortals, and both of the Knights, uh, the uh, the Knight Scythes uh, down at this squad and reduced them down uh, by two, took kill two of them. And reduce one to one wound so probably going to pass morale but it is going to force a morale check um so pretty decent there uh, across this side just rapid firing from uh, this into the knight spinner didn't do any damage so we have no assaults to set off uh, we're just going to continue on um with the assault phase so we're going to do assault and then morale and then obviously the inevitable rule to see if the game continues Right, okay guys, so we're just back after the end of the turn for Necrons and their turn 5, potential end of the game. Uh, combat's uh, slaughtered over there, so they're currently holding that objective, and just over here, uh, no damage done to each other over that side either. So as it currently stands, um, it's up to Graham to roll to see if the game continues on. So as it currently stands before he rolls this, um, Necrons are currently in the lead with 15 to the Eldar's yeah. 8. So a lot of points to make up. So Graham is wanting a high roll here. So if you would be so kind, sir. Yes. It does continue on, which is exactly what the Eldar wanted. So we will go on into turn 6 movement for the Eldar. So let's see what they can do to get some of these points racked up. Right, okay, so the Eldar are on the move to try and claim back some much needed points. So the Wraith Knight is just looking menacing over at the Wraith Guard or potentially looking to do duke it out again with the Monolith. Um, one Knight Spin is just coming up to back up. Uh, we've removed the other one because Graham needed the space and as we said, we don't use it for line blocking. Uh, these guys are staying exactly where they are. Um, the other one, um, just moving across, everyone's just converging around onto... Uh, this one here, I don't think the uh, the Ghost Arc is going to survive all this firepower. Might get lucky, um, but at the moment, with it being big guns never tie, he's already trumping us on that anyway with the heavy support choice. So we'll do a very quick psychic and shooting phase, um, expecting that to be up in flames. And we will come back once the results are in, so we will come back after shooting. Right, okay guys, we're just back after the psychic and shooting phase. Um, just laughing because Graham's saying... Uh, that that monolith is gone. Uh, I'll explain in a minute. So just on the psychic phase uh, across here, just guide. Um, as you can see, explored, but guide was on these guys. Um, unfortunate for Graham, it wasn't the wraith guard that actually took it out. The wraith guard got a hit, failed. I was uh, got it. Obviously minus four. Rolled a d6 for damage, and obviously he got rolled a six. 
Quantum Shield and I rolled a five and ignored it. Um, a lot of firepower coming in, but it was eventually it was the Night Spinner. Uh, the Night Spinners have performed amazingly this game, uh, quite resilient as well, um, again, especially against Necrons. Um, against other armies, I don't think they'd fare as well, but perfect against Necrons. So that was that threat dealt with. Uh, over this side, um, firepower coming in from this Night Spinner doing very well, taking out the Immortals over that side. And the Wraith Knight uh, has shot into the Wraiths and took out one. Uh, fail to shift that off there however and just one assault to do and that is the Wraith Knight is going to charge into the Monolith and that is exactly why Graham is saying that Monolith is gone so we will get all watch but we'll just quickly roll it on camera um, so I reckon you need about a three inch uh, well, about a two inch charge yep uh, definitely on an 11 he'll be in so we will get all watch against it hopefully we can chip some wounds off and obviously there's ongoing combat down here as well so we'll be back once combat has been resolved. Right, okay, so um, we are just at the top of the assault phase here. So on Overwatch, um, I managed to strip a few wounds off Grim. I took one wound from the Flux Arcs and I managed to take two wounds off with the Particle Whip. So we have knocked him down to middle tier for his bracket. So because Graham's obviously said that this is going bye-bye, let's see if he can do it. So he's using all of his feet, uh, but now of course he is hitting on fours so we're just going to fill in this over here so a four save not, not bad. too not bad. bad would have been worse if you were hitting on threes yes and a strength eight toughness eight so wounding on fours oh, oh. oh it's not going it's, not, it's going. not going it's not going nowhere so that is uh for the feet i believe um that is D3 minus. damage minus... Minus two. Minus two. So, that'll be five up. Which we pass. Oh, so, we might as well do our attacks as well. So, at the moment, because our bracket is reduced, our attacks stay the same. Uh, so, we will get three attacks. And we're currently hitting on fives. Okay, so we get one hit. We are strength four... Uh, sorry, strength eight. If we get a four here, I'll be laughing. No, no damage done. So the mighty Wraith Knight, who thought he was big and clever, has done nothing against <laughs> against the monolith. So we'll just carry on. We've just got this combat to do, so we'll carry on, and then we'll go into the Necrons for their turn six. Right, okay, so just back after movement for Necrons on their turn six. So one flyer has just angled and come straight across here still can shoot obviously uh, with no firing arcs and the other one's just almost off the table uh, so we need to be careful with that um, we'll still be able to angle it back on the table but we'll be able to get some shots down over here uh, monolith has just left combat again uh, just pushing some of the foliage out of the, the way because uh, it's not impossible uh, obelisk has just shifted ever so slightly st i've still the graham's literally just laughing at me um because i've literally just angled it perfectly so i'm within three inches there and the the vigilant wraith uh, did pass morale. It couldn't wait. Well, couldn't fail it anyway. Still holding on to that objective there. So we're just going to do very very fast. Uh, we're going to probably do the whole turn now actually, and come back after combats and to roll because there's not a great deal left on the board. We've been hammering each other to pieces. So I'll do shooting and um, the assaults as well. So we'll come back in a moment. Right. Okay. So we are just back after the end of Netrun's turn six. Um, quite hilarious, so uh, shooting everything pretty much fired as much as they could into this Night Spinner. Uh, we stripped it down to one wound remaining, and the Particle Whip fired down, got three wounds, minus two. Graham needed three five-up saves, rolls three five-up saves. Amazing dice rolling over there. Apart from that, that was everything that we could shoot. That was even including the Obelisk and the two Night Sights as well. Uh, we had to kill that to gain another kill point for heavy support. Uh, just in combats, uh, we finally managed to get a hit on this guy. And yet again, uh, minus two AP for the Staff of Light. Graham needed a six up save, and he rolls a six up save. So nothing done there. Um, we have just rolled for to see if it would continue. Uh, we did get a two um, for, the, for that on the dice roll. Uh, the reason that I've kind of re had to reshoot this is because uh, to work out the points. Um, so I did roll a two on the dice to, for it to see if it continue because it was my roll this time, and a two it was rolled. 
So points after all of that, Graham got a line breaker for the Wraith Knight. He did get First Blood and Slay the Warlord, so straight away puts him on three. Then of course, this here is claiming that puts him on six. That puts him on nine. And that puts him on twelve. For the Necrons, Necrons got Slay the Warlord, we killed Prince Ariel. Uh, we also have Linebreaker over there. So that puts us on two. And then of course down here with the scarabs puts us on five. Six, seven, eight. Nine, ten, eleven. Twelve. So uh, sorry, not, not 12. Uh, 12 was for killing the Night Spinner. I've already counted that. So for killing the Heavy Spot, that puts us on 12. So at the end of this game, after going back and forth, the Elder, um, I think it's, uh, I think to be honest, it was, it was a deserved draw. Very, very deserved draw. The Necrons were steaming ahead at one stage, but the Elder have done very, very good work to come back from that. Knocking us off over here definitely did that. So very well done for that. But at the end of this game, it is a draw. Um, the Necron, the, the Eldar have butt heads with the Necrons. Right. So at the end of that round, um, it is a draw for draw against uh, the, these two ancient foes. So thanks very much for watching, guys. This has been a battle report by Battleforge Brothers. Uh, tune in next time. And until then, happy war gaming. <laughs>